Hi everybody, Nick Blazier here with another position analysis video. And today we've got one that came up in uh, the Slavia Open match that I played. That'll be on my YouTube channel soon enough as a play and explain video. Um, I had a tough decision. I had sent my opponent an early cube at 11 away three way, which is going to happen a lot. They get into this dominating position and end up considering sending a cube back um, to four. And so would you think about doubling this? Do you think you're far enough ahead? You know, what's your take points? Um, does White have enough wins here to take this and play it out? What's going on in this position? These are really tough. Is it possibly too good somehow? Is there maybe like too much gamut equity to send this? Um, these are all the kinds of questions that come up and I, I help out in my book a little bit with, with some of the fundamental ways to answer them. I don't go as far out into the 11 away, three away realm, but I'll, I'll dive into this in a second. First, I just want to show really quickly um, where are my my upcoming tournaments. Yeah, you can uh, watch for coverage of the RAC London Open on my my channel, and then I'll be posting video links to the Loot Rocky Grand Prix in Greece as well, and Cherry Blossom coming up in the end of April in Virginia. So so yeah, lots of backgammon action coming up. Uh, back to here though, let's we'll start off by showing the answer. Sure. Let's go ahead and bring that up. And so what occurred over the board is I got redoubled and I passed this, unfortunately. So I gave up a whole bunch of equity in this one. Um, and it's tough to see like exactly, I, I don't know. There's a lot, of, a lot of ways to approach this. I think maybe the first thing like more beginner players notice is that if they're getting a four cube, they know they can automatically send it to eight. That's a whole bunch of extra overage and points. So I should always take the cube and take that advantage. Um, but at some point we learn that, that if we're completely dead, of course, we're not gaining anything by that. Um, and that there's some sort of take point in there and some winning chances where that makes sense to do. And less than that, we need to pass it. And I really wasn't sure in this one. Um, you know, I could maybe come to my, like, get close enough to my take point without having memorized it. I know it, like my, my ballpark would probably be under 10 in this. And so, so I mentioned in my book that, that we don't need to memorize a ton of match equities and things like that in order to, uh, you know, be good at this game and be good at uh, dealing with match situations like this, um, which I think is still true, but some of these Crawford scores can kind of help out um, if that, or they can, they can help you uh, like at least ballpark with the risk over risk plus reward kind of equation over the board, what, what the take point might be in some end game cubes like this. And when they're end game like this, that really, that take point matters more. It really is a matter of just how often we're winning your opponents, canceling all their gammons. Our gammon value on an eight cube is going to be, you know, something, but, but not all that relevant. And it's really generally going to be in situations like this where it's just down to wins too. Um, so if I was going to ballpark this, well, I know if I get in the recube to eight and I win, then I'll be going to three away, three away, right? So, so my, my gain is going to take me to 50% match equity. Um, my risk in accepting this and sending it is going to be whatever I could have played for at one away, 11 away, which must be small, <laughs> right? So, so I'm not risking much to, to gain 50 um, yeah, to, I guess not exactly the risk plus gain will be 50 since that's where I result, but the risk is going to be the difference between my match equity at one away, 11 away. Um, and, and yeah, that, I mean, I remember seven away, uh, one away post Crawford is all the way down to like under 10% already. And it keeps kind of jumping, not by like half. So I would suppose that like nine away is probably around 6%. Maybe this is like under five already. Um, so if we're thinking, even if we use like a 5% number or something like this to, uh, to ballpark it, uh, then my take point would be around 10. And I know it's a little less, so it's probably got to be a little bit less. Um, so that part's not so hard for me. I think uh, coming up with, you know, if it got really granular and really close, then I would have no clue. Um, but the thing that really trips me up here is is understanding what on the earth my winning what on earth my winning chances are in in a position like this. I, I don't know. And real quick, just to show you too, in uh, I'm going to show you the cube information just to see the 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 take point that we're working with. So 
in the analyze menu, you won't be able to see me clicking the menu here. Analyze to cube information will bring up this window that you will be able to see though. And we can see that at this 11 away, three away score line on a two cube, um, my dead cube take point is 14.11. So that's gonna be like double my match equity since I'm only getting up to 50% uh, on the gain side. But given that I, or I guess, sorry, it's a little different than that. We can look at the numbers for that too, potentially. But uh, but the live cube is going to be all the way down to about 7%, right? So, I mean, we can, these like crazy asymmetric kind of recubes, maybe guessing that it's somewhere around here isn't too bad of a guess. We could run through a couple other three away scores and just kind of see where it hovers. So down to nine away, now we're up to seven and a half percent. Eight away is back to 6.75. Uh, yeah, this one really wins you the match, so it's closer to your seven away, one away. Um, yeah, once we're actually winning the match on these, then it's just purely our, our match equity if we pass to one away Crawford is like the last point that we would, would take this, right? So that gets a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, we can see that for these further out ones where there's a lot of overage on that four points, that under 10% is probably enough and they it hovers around that six to seven i mean we get even lower i guess out here further out um but it doesn't drop by too much and this is pretty this effect is pretty small to be trying to calculate over the board right understanding the difference between five percent winning chances and four percent winning chances i don't know how to do that <laughs> so so i think all we can do in positions like this is kind of toy around with the, some references to understand how dead we are you know and i shared a couple of those in my book for the post Crawford trick kind of scenario that you still like in dead races have some winning chances and things like that. But maybe this is a good reference that even with our, our crash board and blots around with a third checker back and behind a six prime that we're still going to win this about 10% of the time. You know, if we know that uh, maybe this is something that comes up over the board and we can, and use that as like a reference point for whether we should send or not. Um, I will point out too that our opponent's giving up their 11% gammons, which is like hurting their equity some, but that doesn't make this position too good. It uh, would still be better if they doubled to get a pass. So, so our opponent has has gained equity by sending this cube and getting me to pass. In a too good position, they, they lose equity when they send it and get a pass. It's worse off for them. Um, so yeah. Um, so maybe this helps as like a reference to kind of think about at three way, 11 way when I'm totally dead in these like match ending recubes, when do I want to take, we can play around with this more though, and kind of get some other ideas of, of how dead positions are like when we would just clearly pass them in a normal game. And so what if we're, I don't know, with the checker only two back and we're going to get trapped a lot, you know, what are our winning percentage chances from a position like this? Uh, so we do get gammoned a little bit more. But, but we win a full 16%. We still get like some chances to escape and win the race and things like that here. Um, so something that's probably too good for money um, could still be a take at this kind of score pretty easily, right? Uh, what if we had a fourth checker back here now and something in board with this two point board? How are we doing now? Um, so yeah, now this one would be bad enough to let go of. Right, we're down underneath 5% with the crash board. Uh, what if our board isn't completely crashed and we have like a little bit of survival there with decent race. Uh, so we go up a little bit over 5%, but still not enough, quite enough to take at this score. And now we are in too good range where our pro opponent's probably thinking that way. Um, yeah, and then what if we get into like very gamonish positions where as we, as our opponent kind of tracks around, though the contact's worth quite a bit, do we get enough wins out of this? Yeah, we're back up over 11% now. Um, so no, the, the crash board is, uh, loses you quite a few wins in a position like this too. Um, but yeah, just kind of getting a feel for it and, and going through variations and figuring out, you know, how dead is dead. <laughs> it's, I think, the only way to uh, really figure situations like this out. And and it's not something that we need to know in our regular play for the most part, so it's not something we're gonna study outside of that. Um, but, but we can look at the winning chances more often when we're in positions like this after we've taken or something and just keep an eye on it and try to get some frame of reference for, for what, you know, you know, we already have a good frame of reference for around 20 to 25%.
what does 15 look like? What does 10 look like? What does five look like? Um, and try to like get some, some references for, for how deep we can take. I guess another one that would be interesting too is if uh, our opponent's just way ahead in the race and like winning every time and we just have this very minimal contact, you know? How does this look here? And this one's good enough to claim, right? And so maybe if our contact's better and we can win when we hit though, does it get there? Now this one's enough, right? And we're up above 10% there. Um, so that was what really tripped me up on this one is you guys are seeing as I run through these positions that a crash board makes it very difficult to win. Uh, but I guess perhaps the flip side that I wasn't seeing of it is that we're ahead in the race in this particular variation, right? And so maybe we can just still escape and come around. And we're not going to, with the third checker, we can't get trapped either. So I actually don't know how much better. Yeah, this is, this is a good amount better still. But so I guess the trap isn't a big feature of it. Um, but yeah, very interesting position, one that I really struggled with. Um, but you know, I, hopefully I've given you some tools for how to wrestle with these big match ending cubes. If you ever run into one, uh, the equity swing is very big. Of course, my match winning chances here are poor either way. <laughs> so it can feel like a little silly to sweat too much, but, but I don't know. Yeah. If you send these and your opponent's willing to send a cube like this, you, you want to know how to maximize your chances, um, with something that's as big of a swing as like, uh, potentially an eight cube versus going to Crawford game, right? That's a big difference. So yeah, hope that helps out. I'll be back with more position analysis videos soon. Uh, bye for now, everybody. Thank you.